These are the lecture notes for chapter 32 on the cardiovascular system. We are going to focus on um, the human cardiovascular system and blood. So we, I will go through the first two sections, but very briefly. Um, first of all, make sure you know what a circulatory system is. The circulatory system in, in any animal functions to move fluid between various parts of the body. So any animal that has a circulatory system is, is going to function in transport of um, materials that can be transported through the blood, basically. Um, sometimes it's not blood. Sometimes we call it hemolymph. You know, um, sometimes it's a different fluid. Uh, like with the echinoderms, it's, it's going to be um, the fluid that's in the... Um, um, water vascular system. For the hydra, we have a gastrovascular cavity on, on, in all the cnidarians. Gastrovascular cavity combines the digestive and the circulatory systems. Um, a planarian also has um, a gastrovascular cavity. Um, invertebrates that have a circulatory system. <coughs> I'm sorry. There are two types of circulatory fluids. Either there's blood, and if it's blood, then it's contained within blood vessels. Or <clears throat> with animals that have an open circulatory system, the fluid is called hemolymph, and that is a mixture of blood and tissue fluid. Um, animals that have an open circulatory system, sorry, have a heart that pumps hemolymph through vessels into like a space, an empty space that surrounds the tissues. Um, and then a closed circulatory system is like the one that you that um, humans have. And that is where you have the heart pumping blood through arteries to capillaries and then back to the heart through veins. So the blood is enclosed within blood vessels and the heart. It doesn't get pumped into open spaces. Most cells in the body are not far from a capillary. The capillaries are the smallest blood vessels, and they deliver nutrients and oxygen and remove waste from our cells. So humans have a closed circulatory system. This is an illustration of an open circulatory system like you have within the arthropods. And this is an example arthropod, a grasshopper. They have a heart that pumps blood through vessels, and it's not blood, it's hemolymph. But if this fluid is pumped through vessels into a, an open space called a hemoseal, and then the fluid drains back into the heart. But a closed circulatory system like earthworms have, and also humans, the heart pumps blood through blood vessels, and then it comes back to the heart through blood vessels. It stays enclosed within the blood, within the cardiovascular system. So now we're going to talk a little bit about transport in vertebrates. All vertebrates have a closed circulatory system and we call it a cardiovascular system. Cardio for heart and vascular for blood vessels. The vertebrate heart has at least two chambers. The atria are the chambers that receive blood and then the ventricles pump blood. Um, fish, for example, have one atrium and one ventricle. Humans have two atria and two ventricles. The blood vessels are arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins. The arteries carry blood away from the heart. Our main artery is the aorta, and it carries blood away from the heart. And then arteries branch into smaller arteries called arterioles, and the arterioles then lead to the capillaries, which are the smallest blood vessels. Capillaries exchange materials with tissue fluid or interstitial fluid, and the materials are, for example, gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen coming from the lungs has to reach our, um, all of the cells of our body. And then carbon dioxide builds up in our cells when our cells carry out cellular respiration. And carbon dioxide is a waste product. So the capillaries take the carbon dioxide from our um, tissue cells back to our lungs where the, we breathe it out. 
And then the capillaries join with uh, larger blood vessels called venules, and venules form veins, and veins are larger than venules, and veins return blood to the heart. Both venules and veins collect blood from capillary beds, which are just large collections of capillaries. And here you see um, an illustration of cross sections through an artery, a vein, and a capillary. As you can see, the capillary just has one layer of cells, and the, the cells, the um, cells of the capillary are called um, endothelium, or this tissue is called endothelium, and they're actually simple squamous epithelial cells, and it's just a single layer, so very, very thin, tiny, microscopic, actually. They're just large enough for red blood cells to go through one at a time, and even red blood cells even have to bend a little bit to fit through the capillary. And then we have arteries, which have very thick muscular walls. Because they are under great pressure, they are pumping blood away from the heart. Whereas veins have a larger space um, inside the vein and a thinner muscle layer of smooth muscle. Uh, veins also have valves and arteries do not. So veins have valves that prevent the blood from going back when it has traveled forward in a vein. It won't go backwards because those valves will keep it from going backwards. <clears throat> and this is how their kind of uh, blood vessels are kind of arranged. You have arteries connected to arterioles, connected to capillary beds, and then you have capillaries connected to venules, and um, then venules connected to veins. And most of the time, this is true for, except for one major example, in arteries, the, the um, blood is oxygen rich. In veins, it's oxygen poor. The only example where that is not true is that the pulmonary arteries take blood away from the heart to the lungs to pick up oxygen. So in the pulmonary arteries that are carrying the blood to the lungs, the oxygen is actually oxygen poor. And then you have pulmonary veins that bring the blood from the lungs back to the heart where it's gonna pump that oxygen rich blood to the body. So the pulmonary veins have oxygen rich blood. That would be the two except exceptions. But in the systemic circuit, which is all the other arteries and veins, the arteries contain the oxygen rich blood and the veins contain the oxygen poor blood. And that's why you see arteries colored red and veins colored blue in diagrams. Now, there are different circulatory pathways. Um, I just mentioned the systemic circuit and the, the circuit that carries blood to the lungs is the pulmonary circuit. So um, there are some vertebrates like, well, the fish have a single circuit pathway. Um, blood flows in a single loop and the heart only has two chambers, a single atrium and a single ventricle. So basically in a fish, the blood is received into the atrium and then it's pumped out the ventricle to, um, so that it goes past the gills. And when it goes past the gills, it picks up oxygen and then it keeps going and uh, delivers um, blood to the systemic capillaries, which provide oxygen to all of the tissue cells. And then veins bring a bring that blood back to the atrium. So it's just a single circuit. But if you look at the frog, has a double circuit, and the bird, and so do humans, have a double circuit. Frogs have three chambers. They have two atria, and then a single ventricle where the um, oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood actually mixes. It's not as efficient as when you have a divided ventricle or two separate ventric ventricles. Um, that's why frogs have to, amphibians have to supplement breathing with their lungs by breathing through their skin. So here's your double loop. You have um, the right atrium of the frog's heart receives oxygen-poor blood. The left atrium, I, did I say that right? Yeah, the left atrium receives oxygen-rich blood from the lungs. And then the ventricle pumps that blood. It pumps um, that mixture of oxygen poor, oxygen rich blood. It pumps that blood to the lungs, the pulmonary circuit, 
where it picks up oxygen, comes back to the left side and it's oxygen rich. And then um, that ventricle also pumps at the same time, it pumps some of the blood to the systemic circuit, which is the rest of the body, where those capillaries deliver oxygen to the, um, the cells of the body. And then it comes, the blood comes back to the right side, the right atrium, where it's oxygen poor blood. So um, the biggest difference in the frog and the bird heart is that the frog heart has three chambers and the bird heart has four, has two atria and two ventricles. The, the oxygen rich blood in the left ventricle is, is separated from the oxygen poor blood in the right ventricle. Um, so going back to the notes, amphibians have blood that flows in a double loop. They have a systemic circuit and a pulmonary circuit. They have two atria and a single ventricle. Most reptiles have a septum or a divider that partially divides the ventricle. Um, so it's kind of like having two ventricles, but not, not quite, you know. So the um, mixing of the oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood is kept to a minimum, unlike with amphibians. And actually, in the crocodilians, which includes crocodiles and alligators, the septum completely separates the ventricles, so there's no mixing of oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood. Then when you have birds and mammals, the blood still flows in a double loop. There are two circuits, just like in with the amphibians and the reptiles. But the difference is there are two separate ventricles. The right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs, so it can pick up oxygen. The left ventricle pumps that oxygenated, oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. Now we're gonna move on and concentrate on the human cardiovascular system and human blood. The human heart lies within a membranous sac called the pericardium. Um, it has four chambers. The upper two chambers are called the atria. They receive blood. And the lower two chambers are the ventricles and they pump blood away from the heart into arteries. Here is an illustration um, showing you the surface features of the human heart and we'll go through them. Um, we'll start with um, the chambers of the heart. Let's go over those first. So this is the right atrium. This is the right ventricle. This is the interventricular septum. It's not labeled on here, but it divides the right ventricle and the left ventricle. From this view, this is the anterior view. So if you were looking down into, like if you were on top of, if, if you're in front of somebody looking at them, they were staring at you and you were staring facing them, um, it would be like you were, you're looking at the heart, you know, um, if someone is lying on their back and you're looking at their chest. So this is the anterior view of the heart. And it's a little bit misleading because the left side of the heart, the left ventricle is much larger and thicker than the right ventricle, but you can't see it all from the anterior view. So this is the right um, atrium, this is the right ventricle, and then this area is the left ventricle, but a lot of it goes back behind the heart. And this is the left atrium. All right, so the major artery that leads from the left ventricle is the aorta. This, this is the aorta itself, and this is called the aortic arch, which has three branches, has the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery, and they just go to different areas of the body and supply um, different areas of the body, but it, there, all of these are, are eventually taking blood to um, the body cells or the tissue cells to um, transport oxygen to our cells and also nutrients. Then you have this part of the aorta that's not labeled, but it descends, it's called the descending aorta and it descends into your abdominal cavity and it supplies your lower body. So the aorta is the major artery of the body. Um, we also have the major veins that are gonna bring the blood back to the right atrium. They're called vena cava. The one that comes from the upper body is the superior vena cava, and from the lower body, it's called the inferior vena cava. 
So these are veins that bring oxygen poor blood back to the heart, to the right side of the heart. Um, and now the right ventricle is going to pump blood to the lungs, to the pulmonary circuit, through the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries. You can see the left pulmonary arteries here and then the right pulmonary arteries kind of go behind that atrium and the um, vena cava. So here's the right pulmonary arteries. You've also got after the blood goes to the, the lungs and picks up oxygen, it comes back to the left side of the heart through the pulmonary veins. So here's the right pulmonary veins and the left pulmonary veins, and they're going to bring that blood into the left atrium. There are some um, coronary arteries and veins that are shown on, on the diagram here. This is the right coronary artery which lies kind of in between the right atrium and the uh, right ventricle. And then, um, let's see, this is the left cardiac vein is shown, he shown here, and it, it sort of lies here in between the um, two ventricles. I think those are the only um, coronary blood vessels that are shown. Yeah, 